Hello everyone. Thanks for stopping by the Disambiguation Station. I have a review for you today of the Fluke 17B Plus Multimeter. If you're a hobbyist or a maker or you do any type of electronics work, obviously you have to have a multimeter. And for some of us, multimeters seem to be a bit of an obsession. Uh, yes, you know who you are. Sure, you can get a free multimeter at Harbor Freight or one that's less than $10 on eBay. And in many cases, those are fine, but there are other cases where they just don't cut the mustard and that's where this one comes in. If you're working with digital electronics or USB ports or five volts DC or little batteries, a cheap meter might be the way to go. Cheap ones are reasonably accurate and they offer basic functions like voltage and current and resistance measurements, but the cheap meter sort of becomes less attractive or, or might even become a liability to an enthusiast or tradesman who wants a calibrated accuracy or features that are not standard on the, the cheap ones or durability and most importantly, safety. If you work with anything more than a small battery powered circuit or, or an Arduino or something, you should really give your meter a safety check. Multimeters are labeled with a category rating. You'll see something like CAT2 or CAT3 on the meter, and this indicates the meter's ability to safely handle a voltage spike. Meters with a higher category rating are used when there's more risk of a high voltage overload, which could cause electrical or physical damage. NI.com has a category ratings document that gives us some details about these category ratings, and also Fluke has published a really nice brochure which explains in layman's terms, the differences between the categories, and I'll link those here. So basically to generalize, a higher cat rating means that if your meter gets hit with an input that it can't handle, you'll be hurt less. And of course, being hurt less is always a good thing. It doesn't guarantee your meter will survive. It hopefully guarantees you will. The 17B plus is rated cat two, 1000 volts and cat three, 600 volts. And they say a video is worth 1.8 million words, so let's check out this clip from a great video by MJ Lorton, which demonstrates this principle better than words or pictures can. By the way, Martin, we miss you. There's a link to the full video in Martin's channel below. You can see that it actually measures 750 volts just fine. Okay. And uh, my card's indicating that. Or actually, we're putting it at about 660. So. Now the, the important part of this is what happens if you put the meter in a uh, function other than volts. So in this case I've selected an, an ohm circuit, okay? So, so that's what happens if the meter is not designed correctly. Although it worked just fine for measuring the voltage, you happen to have it in the wrong function when you did it, it's a, it creates a very big hazard. So, so this meter is a uh, 600 volt category 2, so I'm putting in 660 volts into it. And go to the voltage setting and it shows overload. That's because I'm putting in greater than the uh, rated voltage into it. And if I put it into ohms, which I just did to that meter, there's no issue. So, no issue. One of the uh, things about these meters is that we put it in a very expensive fuse. One of the things about uh, uh, the meter I just blew up, you can see the fuse that they put in to protect you against 750 volts CAT2. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. So if you look at a fuse that's only rated to 250 volts, but it's rate, but the rating says 600 volts CAT, anything on the front, something is seriously wrong. You need to have a fuse that's rated to 1,000 volts with an interrupt rating of 20 uh, kilovolts. So if you're working around any electrical sources with the capability to deliver enough energy to injure you, even like a car battery, then you should think twice about your multimeter's cat rating before just whacking the leads into your test points, and I think you'll be glad you did. The meter manufacturers can self-assign these cat ratings to their products, and this leads to some pretty exaggerated and downright dishonest practices. Imagine labeling a meter cat 3 600 volts when you only use a 250 volt fuse inside it. Now that's why there are independent test labs, and that's why these labs certify the ratings on specific meters. 
I do some industrial work, so I bought this meter because I assume Fluke branded equipment will actually live up to its specifications and offer me a bit more safety in the field. Anyway, the real reason you'd want this meter is the street cred and bragging rights, of course. You have a Vici? You mean you have an Itchy, don't you? Ha, <laughs> mine's a Fluke. Yeah, actually the Fluke name is synonymous with quality, so you know that respect you get isn't too far out of order, but of course you're going to pay a premium for the brand name. Now, while Fluke meters are typically more expensive, the 17B Plus is lower in the cost spectrum than many of the others, but still offers some of the higher end features. It's actually designed for the Asian market, so it's not as commonly seen here in the US. It is readily available though on Amazon and eBay, and the price is certainly better than other Fluke offerings, making it a, a, a good choice for an enthusiast who wants more from his meter than, than Harbor Freight can offer. You can pick up one of these used on eBay for as little as $50. And as long as it's been treated well, a used meter should be just fine. Now, new in the box on eBay between $120 and $140, and from Amazon Prime, it's $139. I've put links below. This is quite a bit cheaper than the one that's commonly referenced, the Fluke 87V. Or wait a minute, is that 87V or 5 or uh, I don't know. Anyway, the, the common Fluke 87, I'm going to go with V. Uh, it retails for around $400. Here are some results on eBay, as you see, for comparison. Now, the feature set of the 17B Plus includes AC and DC volts and millivolts, AC and DC amps, milliamps, and microamps, capacitance, frequency counter and duty cycle, min max, hold, and relative measurements, resistance, continuity, and it does have a fast response time on the continuity checker. And diode check. It includes a temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit, no less, using a K-type thermocouple, and the thermocouple is included in the package. And it includes a backlight and big numbers. So we don't have to get out those bifocals or cheaters to look at this thing. And here's a link to the features on Fluke's website. One of the common counterparts is the Fluke 117, which is advertised as an electrician's meter. Now there's a problem with this one. The main problem is it doesn't have a milliamp range. And of course, as hobbyists, we almost always deal in very small currents. We don't deal in large current measurements, so having a milliamp range is indispensable. That, for me, made the 117 a bad choice. Of course, with all these features, you want to be fairly certain the numbers you get are accurate. The 17B Plus has reasonable accuracy in all the ranges. Uh, AC volts 1%, DC volts half a percent. AC millivolts 3%, DC millivolts half percent, resistance between half a percent and one and a half percent, capacitance between 2% and 5%, frequency one tenth of a percent, duty cycle around 1% for 60 hertz signals, current in all ranges one and a half percent, and temperature around 2%. These are fairly decent numbers, and as hobbyists, we can certainly survive this level of accuracy. And it's uh, also specified to remain in range for at least a year after calibration. Naturally, a custom meter like Dave Jones's 121GW will provide enhanced accuracy, and naturally it will come at a higher price point. How about ease of use? Well, the controls are easy to use. The range switch is tight and, and it works smoothly. The backlight is bright. Uh, the fold-out bail holds the unit upright, and it's easy to open and close. The batteries are easy to change. All you have to do is turn the cam 180 degrees with a flat screwdriver, and it only uses two AA batteries. They're cheap, they're easy to find, and they last a long time. So there's no need to disassemble the case to change the battery. So you don't even have to pull off the rubber outer uh, cover. You do, of course, have to disassemble it to change the fuses. But you know, if you're careful, they'll last forever. Thankfully, 10 amps is more than most small batteries can source. So even if you accidentally direct short your supply in amps mode, you should be okay. Of course, there's some cons also. First, the meter is not a true RMS meter, but that actually doesn't matter unless you're measuring non-sinusoidal AC waves. Now, there's a nifty little brochure that Fluke has produced on true RMS, and I'll link to that here. Also, it's sort of annoying, but you do have to take the unit completely apart to change the fuses. Now, as I said before, that's probably not going to happen very often. The price is a bit high for an entry-level unit, but as I said earlier, if you're working with only low-voltage DC, you can get a free meter at Harbor Freight, and that'll serve you just fine. And also, accuracy is not quite as tight as something like the 87V, but you're also going to pay more for that. 
Let's take a look inside, of course. The meter is disassembled by removing the yellow rubber outer cover, the battery cover, and six screws. As you can see, the batteries are connected to the board by some spring terminals, which press against some plated pads. Now, this works fine, but make sure you don't bend these when you disassemble it. There are two large replaceable fuses. You can test these fuses without even removing the cover by simply placing the unit in resistance mode and probing the appropriate jack. If you get an open circuit, the fuse is bad. If you don't get an open circuit, the fuse should be okay. There's not much else inside. Everything's done with the chip on board under the blob, and there are only a few protection components and passives remaining. Overall, if you're looking for something more than a free or cheap entry-level meter, you can save some money and get a lot of features with the Fluke 17B+. I hope this review is helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a great big thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. This review is not sponsored or paid for by anyone, and it reflects my honest views at the time of this recording. As always, thanks for watching. Now go have fun with electronics.